on your actual podcast page, if you're like me, you're like, who's going to a podcast web page to listen? Nobody. But Google loves that. And so you want your SEO on your individual episodes page to be good. So Google thinks you're a safe entity and then you'll be higher in the search rankings. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. What's up, podcast? It's your host, Adam Adams. Today, I'm joined with Mike Gravano. It should be so easy, but I keep freaking out about it. I keep freaking out. It's my whole life. You can like every teacher I've ever had. Don't feel bad. All right. Give me one teacher story. Oh, preferably elementary. None of them are full stories, but when you're doing role, especially the first day or with a sub and they're, they're going through and you can just tell when they're like, Mike, I just go, that's me. You don't even have to try to say my name. I'm Mike Big Sigh. Mike Big Sigh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can we change your last name to Big Sigh for this episode? I love it. Mike Big Sigh right. coming at okay. you. All right. Don't actually do that to our editors. We will keep it. Bravano. And yeah, I, I messed it up a few times and I just keep thinking, but now it's easy. Now it became easy after a while, Mike. Yeah, you just got to wrap your tongue around it a little. Okay, that sounds dirty, but okay. Let's move on a little bit to, you got three podcasts and a full-time job and you're married. Yes. You got a dog. Yes. So here's where I want to go. The listener thinks that they might be too busy to maintain their podcast. Mm. The listener thinks they might be too busy to launch a podcast. Yes. Are they actually too busy, Mike? No, in my experience, nobody is actually that busy. And I'm I'm not trying to belittle anybody's life. Maybe some people work like three jobs, but like for the most part, you have the one job, you have your family, you have your friends. It's you have time. You are passionate. And how I start, I've been podcasting since 2010. And a small group of us were like, all we do is sit around the backyard and talk about movies and TV. It consumes us. It's all we're watching. It's all we're doing. It's all we're talking about. We should either stop and like learn real hobbies, uh, like how to make tables or something with our hands, or we can take what we're already doing and put it out of the world because we think we're pretty smart. We think we're pretty funny. Uh, and so we turned what we were already doing, watching TV and movies, and started podcasting. All right. So what it sounds like is that you really ought to be monetizing. If you turned a hobby into something bigger than a hobby, you ought to be Yes. Making it monetized. But when we were talking in the green room, you said you had, I don't remember the name of the software, but you basically were monetizing one of the three shows that you have. And yeah. you kind of pulled the plug on that. We uh, briefly would you, were, yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. No, nope, I was going to say, you're reading my mind and, and that's good because <laughs> I, I needed that. Briefly, we were on Patreon with the Superhero Show Show. And with that was all kinds of extra content. And that's what kind of stopped is a couple of like, we all have day jobs. Some of the guys have kids. And so it was. A lot and early on with Patreon, it was worth it. And then eventually it was not. And so we're like, I think very strategically, don't just make any decisions willy nilly, right? We were like, let's take a year to stop with the extra content, stop this version of monetization. And until we can like look at our schedules holistically, figure out an actual strategy, because there wasn't one. It was just now we're on Patreon and making more stuff there too. And it was not step one, I think, is get more listeners and then later down the road monetize when people are demanding more content from you. And how many episodes have you had on the three different shows? One's called the Superhero Show Show. Yes. By the way, I already told Mike this, but when I looked at it for the first time and I saw two shows, I thought it was a mistake. (laughs) I was like, oh, I better screenshot that and point that out to him so he can fix it. And then I started listening and it's all intentional. It Um, is. You're like 500 episodes. Pardon? Yeah, I was going to say, what I love about you is that you're a kind heart. You, you're like, this is a mistake. I should help somebody out instead of just like <laughs> pointing and showing somebody. <laughs> so that's like 500 episodes in. And then you got another show called Movie of the Year. So Superhero Show Show has Mike, our yes. guest today, Cassie, Ryan, and Caitlin. Correct. And then he has Movie of the Year, which has Mike and Ryan, still you know, kind of the leaders and producers, and their buddy Greg. Yes. And then... Mike's got a third podcast called Off the Books that he does with his fintech company. It is a quote, and I don't know if I can agree with this yet because I haven't listened to any episodes, but it's a non-dry conversation about with accountants and auditors. It sounds kind of funny, a non-dry. How do you make it non-dry? Adam, thank you. That is a great question because as somebody who does not have a financial background, and I just worked for this company that was in it, so I started to research and learn, I found it all very dry. 
And thankfully, they had this show going for two years before I showed up. It was just a little like under the radar. A lot of people in the company didn't know we had a show. And I was like, I know this isn't why I was hired, but can I just join you guys? And we started to shake it up because they wanted to be goofier, but they were very red. They would script everything, their answers, their questions. They would have a back and forth email with the guests first. There was never any surprises. And I was just like, let's get rid of that. There's the wish. They used to have like a goofy closing question. Um, And I was like, let's lean into that energy a little more. So let's bullet point our notes. You can send the guests the questions, but you're not going to have your answers pre-scripted to what you think they're going to respond. Let's just be in the moment and be real and really try to inhabit that. Pretend we're at a happy hour. Workday is done. You had a couple in you. And now you're going to tell me what you think about the SEC cybersecurity ruling. And how much is it pretending and how much is it that you guys are actually using some flasks? On that show, fully pretending. Because okay. we do record around 10 in the morning most Fridays. <laughs> so I don't think the bosses would love that. But we just did our big conference. We knocked out like 12 episodes at our big conference in Nashville last week as of recording. And some of the guests, it was definitely during a real happy hour and got to join and we're a little loosey-goosey. And it was everything I've always wanted. I've got a couple of questions around the three podcasts, around, I think one of them had 500 episodes. How many do the other two have? Both are a few hundred each. The movie of the year is probably so like So around 200. like a thousand episodes you published. Yeah, for these. And like, this is, I've been, again, podcasting a long time. I haven't monetized my specific podcast, but I've taught podcasting. I've produced podcasts for magazines, universities. So yeah, I probably have a couple thousand under my belt. Okay. So- how many episodes go out a week between all three podcasts? One for each. Okay. One a week. Why don't you do one a month? Well, for Superhero, it's always about that week's shows. So that's the most timely show. And so it's whatever came out last week. So instead of being like, well, here's for a month of Riverdale and a month of Harley Quinn and a month of Arrow, that would be hard to keep track of. And the conversation's kind of dead for those episodes at that point. You know, what I didn't know is that there was like content coming out that often with actual shows. So it really so, is. <laughs> so it's like, excuse my naivety, but what kind of platform are these shows coming on? Not yours, but the right. like Harley. Harley and- Quinn is on HBO Max, Riverdale's CW. Uh, oh, so yeah, yeah. Cable channels, network TV, uh, all of those. Amazon Prime, Netflix. Okay. And do all, because sometimes you'll have four people on for SSS. Yeah. Sometimes you have four different co-hosts and sometimes you might have one or two or three. Yeah. And I even noticed that you were off for a few episodes. So I think I listened to four and I only heard you on one of them. Um, And and I want to get into some of this, Uh, but how, first question, I've got so many, this is the hardest thing right now (laughs) for me. I've got too many questions, but I want to ask like, within an episode when you have like four people do all four have to watch all of the episodes that you're going to talk about or how does that work no so early on that was our rule and that's how we lost some panelists and some friends so we ryan and i who's my main creative producer partner we're like how can we make this sustainable we're getting older he is a kid I have a dog I need to take care of. How do we make this work? So we have a main segment. Our everything pop filter is we invented the our show skeleton. And even though it's a very improvisational comedy panel style show, it's actually super structured underneath. And we have very clearly defined segments that maybe the listener doesn't even realize is happening, but we know what's going on. And there's a lot of organization on the back end. Hopefully our wacky antics hide that how much thought has been put into it. So we have a main segment that rotates every week because there are so many comic book TV shows. So that rotates and that's the one we definitely all have to watch. And then we have a segment called the pull list because in the comic book world, the pull list is you go to your local comic book store and you're like, here's the comics I want every week. Just put them in my folder. And so this is called the pull list. And that's, we cover every other show that came out this week. Sometimes if Caitlin's like, I love, The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, I'm definitely going to watch that. And so everything's at least covered. And if it's not covered, we at least sort of talk about it or make fun of it. Because often if there's a reason none of us are watching it, it's not a good show. Okay, cool. All right. So you invented a show skeleton. Yeah. You call it a show skeleton. And that is basically the format of the show. Yeah, exactly. We've done this long enough that we didn't have words for any of the things we were doing. So now I would call it the structure or an outline. And we're just like, I don't know. We're just a couple dudes who liked TV. So what is this? It's a skeleton. We put the meat of the show on it. Okay, cool. 
let's think through this. So you started to monetize. That it sounds like this was the issue on monetization. It sounded like it required extra work that wasn't mm-hmm. quite worth it, at least with the busy lives. Correct. And because you're not just saying, if you want to sponsor the show, you can donate to us. You were more saying, if you want extra additional content, we record these other things, you pay for it. Yeah, it was the tier system. So some people were just amazing and they're just like, here's a dollar a month. I love you guys. And then, but there was, we had some five, $10, $15. And I straight up emailed a guest. I was like, for $15 a month, I love you, Martin. That was his real name. I was like, that was going to be like a monthly live stream with him every. And I was like, I just know. And that's right when Ryan had his baby. I was like, give us less money, man. We're just not going to be able to hold up our end of the bargain. And that's when we had to do that. I was like, what are we doing? Like, if we're making promises, I want to be able to hold to our fans and give them everything we said we would. So that's when we decided to take a beat. Why don't you try just out of curiosity? Why don't you try to just keep it available for just... If somebody just simply wants to support the show and doesn't isn't even asking for that extra content adam that's a really good question i think it's uh (laughs) self-doubt there's definitely like the inner dork in me is always like well nobody's just going to support the stuff i want i need to offer and promise more i need to lure them in to support even though it's clear that we have fans out there which feels so gratifying and so purely i didn't i literally never thought of that until you just said that right now so today mike I jumped in my Jeep to go to the gym. So I'm Mm -hmm. I'm heading to the gym and my Jeep doesn't connect to my phone like it normally does. I'm pretty sure I was cleaning the Jeep or I bumped it with an elbow or the kids were throwing balls in there or something. It no longer wanted to connect directly to my phone and play the music from Don't Make Fun of Me. I use Pandora. I think I'm apparently the only person in the world who uses that. You're one Uh, of the But it didn't do that. Instead, it went to... An FM radio station was like 90 point something. And it's the only station (laughs) that I can get. I live up in the mountains and I can only find one station on FM and no stations on AM radio. Wow. Now I had XM when I first bought the car, but of course I'm not going to pay for that. Right. Because I got my phone. So anyway, it goes to this FM station and here's what I hear. Thanks to viewers like you, we wouldn't be able to have it possible to have this content without you. And if you want to donate, go here. Something like that. Of course, I'm paraphrasing, but it was basically saying, you like this content, you keep coming to this podcast, for example. Yeah. And this is how we pay for things. And then they just basically let people know. So I will say, don't be afraid of it. Don't have a like anything holding you back because this is what has happened. I remember PBS, which I don't even know if it's everywhere. Right. But it was Channel 7 in Utah when I was growing up. Again, public broadcast system or something like that, public broadcast. And people paid for that. And yeah. a- again, sometimes they would have like marathons of just like donate, donate, donate. The phone drives. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I would say that probably, I don't remember his name right now, Martin. Uh, Martin? Martin. Yeah. Yeah. Our super yeah. Friend Martin. If Martin went to the 15 bucks a month to get this one thing, I mean, he might be at a $5 or three bucks a month just to say, Hey, it's cool to be able to check out superhero, superhero show show whenever I want. I want to support these guys. These guys are awesome and it's entertaining and they have a great skeleton and poll list. So I'm going to keep listening to these guys and supporting them. So I want you to try that. I just want to hear how it goes. And once you do it, whether it it flops completely or succeeds, I'd like to have you back on the show so we can talk about it. I mean, I'd like to have you back on the show show so we can talk about it. (laughs) Thank you. No, it's a great idea. Especially, do you know why I feel so dumb is we had a handful of people pick non-tiers. We already had people doing that. And again, in my head, like I was like, shut down the whole thing because I can't do any of the extra work. You blew my mind wide open. (laughs) So do you monetize any of them right now? Is there sponsors or do you sell product services? Are you coaching and consulting? Is there any way of monetization without the, what is it called? It starts with a P again? Pop filter. No, 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 no. Not the pop filter. What is the, uh, not the pop filter, a different P. What's that company that helps you Patreon. Patreon. Oh, yeah. I think so. My collective is called Pop Filter, and that's why I thought you were saying that. So, oh. Patreon. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we filter so, pop culture. So, is there any other way that you monetize other than what, what you used to do with Patreon and you're about to do this week when you get off of this podcast? I, I literally am. Uh, no, you know that that's it for now. 
it's one of those things of when you're like a fully independent and, and you're going to tell me all the reasons I'm wrong, which I love. It. It's why I was excited to come on the show. It feels like right now it's just like get the show out. And that's when you blank in years go by. And so we're restructuring things in the background. I'm going to take more time off being on the show to do all the business stuff. I was like, all right, we have the machine going. We have a big pool of hosts. Somebody needs to start doing this stuff. And so I'm going to take a step back from being the on-air talent and do a little more of this kind of stuff is feed drops to get... uh, Because over the pandemic, we started doing interviews. And so we have a big collective of other nerdy shows we made friends with because everybody was at home and we're like, do you want to be on our show? And just everybody was like, yes, I want to talk to new people. And so we want to start doing feed drops to get our, our show out there more. And then, yeah, once the numbers are bigger and steadier, sponsors for sure. I want to ask you a couple other questions. One that I kept thinking of, especially because it wasn't being monetized. I just was curious, like, is Ryan, Greg, Cassie, Caitlin, are nobody's paid? It's like volunteer. It's all for fun. It's all volunteer, all for fun. Ryan and I lose money every year. Okay. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. Well, it can be a good write-off. It could be a good write-off perhaps against your taxes. But what's interesting is the Superhero Show Show. It's the only one that I've looked up in front of me. I didn't look up movie of the year or off the books yet. But I am noticing that you get fairly good traction on the Superhero Show Show. Like It seems like you got a good amount of listeners, a good amount of ratings and reviews. So I want to find out what you're doing to get in front of people. Yeah, through the years, I think really helpful was that getting guests from other podcasts to be on. We do like a 20 minute interview. And then when it comes out, we'll tag them in the socials and be like, hey, let them know. Before Twitter started a death spiral, we were all over there. I'm trying to get better at Instagram. It was never my social media choice. And so, yeah, a lot of human connections. Ryan and I used to go to local comic cons and meet people there, like a lot of in-person meeting. And One of those things, because my day job is marketing, so it's like, just get that SEO. What are the big shows? Maybe we should put Harley Quinn up front this week because that's what everybody's talking about. That kind of stuff. I'm making some notes on on this. So guest interviews on your show, guest interviews on other people's shows. Yeah. Going to events. Do you bring cards to the event or how do you get like let people know that you have at the show? Yeah, cards, stickers. We have uh, bottle opener keychains that say the Superhero Show show on them. Uh, Wait, do you sponsor the event or do you just like walk around just, with full pockets? We just roll up. We used to be very poor and now we're adults and have some money. So the next step is getting a sponsored booth. Do you guys uh, wear, wear backpacks with all the swag sitting oh, in yeah. your backpack? Oh, yeah. Do you actually? Oh, for sure. Okay. Or just in your pockets and throwing it out like glitter so people can grab the buttons and keychains. Because so I went to grad school at Chapman University in and started teaching podcasting there. Now Ryan teaches podcasting there. In the quad, there's always tables. So we would do tables and do spin a wheel, get a t-shirt. Like we would have a lot of like very, it feels very old thinking, but work to the best of be in person, face to face, eye to eye. We're giving you stuff. Subscribe to our show in front of us. Yeah. So you mentioned bottle openers, stickers. Was it buttons, cards? Did you say uh, cards? I, yeah, I used to have business cards. And then lately I replaced that with a QR code that people can scan and just takes you to okay. all of our stuff. And the QR code is set up so that it already gives a five star review as soon as they scan it. Oh, I wish I knew how to do that. I should I'm gonna email <laughs> if, if when you figure it out, can you send it to me? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm just get, all I'm going to do once that happens is I'm gonna buy a rent, excuse me, not buy a billboard. And it won't say anything at all. It will just have a <laughs> QR code with incites curiosity. And people are like, what is that? People would. And they'll click on it and I'll get like all these ratings and reviews. I love that. Okay. Let's go in on that together. You know what? I'm wondering, should we strike that from the podcast so that nobody else yes. has my brilliant idea? Suddenly just around the country, <laughs> there's just QR billboards. Dude, that <laughs> does sound so smart, actually. I'm surprised I've never seen it. Let's see. So guest interviews yes. on... Your show. Let's talk about that for a second. When somebody else is on your show, is it the superhero show show that people Mm -hmm. are on? And do they know about these comics or how do they get involved in your podcast? It was finding them online. And so we cover so many shows, which is pretty rare. That's kind of like our differentiators. But it's like, so Walking Dead is one of our shows, but there's dedicated Walking Dead podcasts. So I'll look up what are the hottest Walking Dead podcasts and I'll listen. And I'm like, okay, this person doesn't seem like they'll say some gross shit. Sorry. I don't, so like, this person seems like a normal, thoughtful human being. They're not going to be terrible. Uh, and so I reach out to them or Ryan does or Cassie does. So it, it's just, 
bro of... shit like what like wrap your tongue around it or something different no to me that's not gross that's i just <laughs> talked up like th- this person seems like a thoughtful kind person they're not gonna i don't know say the world is so polarized right now adam so they don't seem like a psycho it seems okay to have our brand be connected to theirs kind of thing so you do, know what's do good research. about that what i have learned and this is a great takeaway for any listener what i've learned is if you have somebody else on your show and any one of your listeners starts listening to their podcast, the podcast algorithm connects your two podcasts, Mm -hmm. meaning when someone else that never has heard of you watches their show down underneath, you're more likely to be popping up Exactly, that people can find you as well. So that's brilliant. So guest interviews on your show How about you said being interviewed on other people's shows? Are you really trying to do that a lot or what's kind of your efforts there? The effort there was less. The getting people on our show was very intentional and a lot of work. We have this giant spreadsheet, who's talked to who, when, so we weren't tapping the same shows kind of thing. And the guess was through that, people were like, oh, do you want to do mine? Or just people find out that we're on this nerdy show. They're like, oh, I have these friends who, like, I guessed it at this point, like five or six times. It's called the Marvel Movie Minute. And they're going through the Marvel Universe one minute at a time. And through mutual online friends, they're like, I bet you would enjoy being on that show. So they exchange their information. And so now a couple times a year, I'm on those guys' shows and it's always a fun time. And so that kind of stuff. Do you know people who know people kind of thing? For our, it's so interesting going to like podcast movement because it's so much of the advice, not that it's doesn't work, but for like a comedy panel show like ours, it's not business driven. So like coaching I don't know how we could offer coaching necessarily, even though Ryan and I both have taught podcasting. Well, Um, couldn't you teach somebody how to fly without a cape? I mean, we tried for a while and then the lawsuit started to pile up. (laughs) I didn't realize that you had already tried that. (laughs) I'm full of great ideas today. I love it. All right. (laughs) I think it's the walking energy. Your blood's pumping. No coaching. No coaching. Let's skip to SEO. So you mentioned because of where you were, SEO is a big thing. One of the things that you do is if it's a popular topic, you do try to, I'm going to use the word exploit, which might be the wrong word, but you try to utilize that to your advantage. If something's already been searched for, you might make that kind of the front and center or part of the headline. What else can the listener do? Because I know you said you teach podcasting. What else Mm -hmm. can the listener do to increase their SEO? Yeah, SEO, it could be its own course on its own, but that's is what is your episode title? Get that whatever the keyword is the hot keyword we're talking about, get that close to the front in your title as possible. And then on your actual podcast page. And if you're like me, you're like, who's going to a podcast web page to listen? Nobody, but Google loves that. And so you want your SEO on your individual episodes page to be good. So Google thinks you're a safe entity, and then you'll be higher in the search rankings on Google in general. So it's this weird wraparound to make the robot happy to get to the human beings. And what else can we do? I mean, those are the main ways that I know. I wish I had more advice that long form content tends to be better. So we used to do just bullet points. Like they talk about these five things, but to make the robots happy more, a long form, it looks like a blog post with a podcast type, but that's what Google crawls. And so now it feels repetitive to the human eye, but it's like Harley and Ivy went on their adventure to this. And then Ivy and Harley did this. And then, and so it's very much... If it was for a human reading, it sounds very boring. But again, Google's just like, oh, give that to me. Give me that repetition because then that keyword is all over the place. But it's a fine needle to thread because you can't just hide the keyword. You can't like be like, okay, well, now the keyword is white because the page is white and it's just at the bottom a thousand times. Google will then give you down mark. So it's... it's mm. Let's say that again to- so, so that we understand not to do it. So this is called like black hat SEL. And this was bigger in the marketing world and like the aughts when like the internet was newish and people were like, okay, so search engines like these keywords. So I'm going to make the font the same color as the page background and just write this keyword over and over and over again, because that'll boost my, my scores. But then the search engines have gotten smart enough that they can see that you're doing that. And they're like, no. And then they'll actually make your SEO score lower. So that I understand, do you know or feel that if you do all the things you're already doing and you added black on black or white on white for text right keywords you would be lower yes and if you just did what you were already doing correct interesting good to know 
Yeah, it's interesting to have like, again, I feel dumb sometimes because I've been in the content marketing world for a decade and the podcast world, and they're just starting to at the conferences talk about similar things like a podcast movement this year where we met. There's a at a home presentation, which was awesome because out of home, it's like the big digital billboards or like when the gorillas play in Times Square, the big cartoon band, they play Times Square in New York. That's out of home advertising. So anything that's not on your TV, it's not on your computer. And the fact that podcasting is just like, oh, all this kinds of marketing exists now. We should think about that. Is like, yes, finally. And then there's little stuff that I could have been doing for years because we only started to think about SEO the last couple of years. Uh, it, it's, I'm bad at siloing, Adam. And I don't let the different parts of my world start to connect. I'm working on it. Interesting. I'm going to move to you. You've learned more over a thousand ish episode, maybe 2000 that you've kind of supported with yourself and other podcasts as well. I want to understand like the best and the worst things that you've learned, mistakes that you've made, best advice that you have for the listener, but it'll be right after this message. Hey, my friend, as you know, this episode is sponsored by my company, growyourshow.com. We want you to be able to have the best tools at your disposal without costing you a whole arm and a leg. So right now you can get a free list of vetted equipment that like mics, mixers, webcams, sound treatment, editing software, everything that you need. I created the whole PDF with direct purchase links just to save you time and money to help it be more convenient for you. So this free PDF will help you skip all the guesswork. If it's on there, it's vetted and approved by yours truly. And if it's not on there, it's probably not worth the money. So go ahead and get yours at growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. Let's get back into the show. We are back with Mike Gravano and I said it right. And over the last 1,000 to 2,000 episodes, what is the best stuff he's done? The worst stuff he's done is the mistakes that he's done, things that have gone right, and the best advice. In no particular order, Mike, take it away. Thank you. So Ryan and I have a course where we talk about the 10 rules of podcasting. And then there's plenty of shows that are much, much bigger than ours have ever been that break every rule we have. But I think if you're just getting into a show, here's things you need to keep in mind. And one, even the big show should keep in mind and start with people are listening. That's rule number one. Remember that people are listening. So this is a product, even if it's a passion thing like ours is, it's just a hobby. We love nerdy stuff, but In theory, people will be listening. Remember to be entertaining. Remember to be informative. Don't be a what we call, we make up a lot of dumb words. Don't be a backyardigan, which is suddenly out of nowhere in the middle of your show. You're telling a story that your fellow podcaster knows, but your listeners have never heard about your neighbor, George, and you don't give enough background information. It makes no sense. You're bringing to mix the the podcast world and the real world slammed together with no on-ramp can get very jarring for listeners. So it's just remember you have an audience. And you're so lucky to have an audience. So you want to do right by them and create the kind of show that will keep them coming back. Another piece of advice is, and this helped me in in my real life, but we try to remember is yes and, which is like the first rule of improv. If you're making up a scene with a partner, never say no, but build with them. Yes and, and I think this works in all conversations. Instead of trying to tear somebody apart and be like, oh, what does that mean? Like you can ask them for clarification. But do you know what I mean? There's so many people I think we've lost the skill of just have a good, solid, in-depth conversation, which is the beauty of podcasts, right? And so just yes, end your partner. If they're building stuff, and again, ours, we lean improvisory. We make up a lot of stuff. And so instead of being like, that's not your mom's name, it's like, yeah, man, I don't want to say my real mom's name on the show right now. So I'm going with this story, and maybe it's Dash's my real mom, and maybe it's a character I'm creating. The other one I would say is don't be pedantic, because now I'm just going to stay with conversations. Don't well actually... If you got to correct your guest or your co-host, there's a way to not a dick about it. And then... Wait, was I a dick when I corrected you today? No. Have I done that? Are you saying this because of me? Because... <laughs> oh, you can. I haven't written any of these down. I'm just like, what has Adam done for the last 40 yeah. minutes? <laughs> yeah. What are all the mistakes Adam's making so we can kind of... First and foremost, I had never heard pedantic. Pedantic. So I'm looking at pedantic. I'm yeah. looking it up. And what is it? Many of these essays are long, dense, too pedantic to hold great appeal. What does that mean anyways? Pedantic is like the person who is trying to sound... Who annoys others by correcting small errors. Okay, cool. Yes. Found it. I think I write my professional job and I don't care about what's technically correct. And like, I'm a poet. Is your meaning coming across? And so 
there's somebody who might try to nitpick your sentence. It's like, but you understood what I was saying, right? Can we just move on? Especially I talk very fast. My tongue tends to be faster than my brain. I'll get confused and flip words and make up phrases, but we all know the emotional beat that I'm trying to hit. Let's move on instead of defining everything. This isn't a dig at you. We should define pedantic. Heard. <laughs> well, I found it and now I got it. Emphasizing my own expertise, especially to narrow boring subject matter. So it's just like wasting time right. trying to prove it's random things. The person at the cocktail party who's like, you know, when I was at Yale, this is how the Dean always... And you're like, who is this? This is for you. You're just self-inflating your ego. Yeah. Okay. So I got out of the 10 rules, I got three good ones so we far. Three conversational ones. Yeah. People are listening. And I, I, I wrote people like really big in my notes because yes. to really humanize it, people are listening. So... When we're talking about like, when we're talking about things, especially for our perfect listener, our avatar, we don't want to let anyone out or we don't want to go over their heads. So you make, make sure that you are giving the right background and context for the listener. I remember I've been doing some podcast coaching for even before I launched my company, Grow Your Show. And that was a big thing that I always focused on is you are talking above your listener's head. Like you're talking about these giant things mm -hmm. and your perfect avatar. You already told me your avatar, your perfect listener right. is at this level down here, but you're skipping A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You're going straight to X, Y, and Z, but they're not yet on that page. And you, you have to understand that oftentimes our listener is only listening to this episode, even if it's episode 500, yes. it's the first time that they have ever listened to an episode. And the more episodes that you have, the more likely that it's somebody's first episode that they'll ever listen to on your podcast because you're growing as a bell curve and episode 500 happens to be more popular than episode two. Right. So you're making sure that we understand to not go above their heads, to not confuse them to let them feel like they can listen to this and we're not surpassing them, that we are here for them. Yeah, that's is so for the other show, Movie of the Year, we think about that a lot because film, some people treat it like I'm on my phone and my iPad and it's on in the background. And some people treat it like it's fine art, right? Film can do so many things. And we don't want our listeners to only be like film graduate film students who have know all of the film theory, who rattle off like all of Kubrick's films kind of thing. We want to hit that sweet spot in the middle. So you like movies, you know, you don't know enough about them or you think you don't come along with us. Cause I think in general, the pop filter brand is like, you're smarter than you think you are. I think it's a smart group of people I work with, but we all talk dumb. That's my thing is be human, be who you are and don't talk down or above your audience. Like you were just saying. Yeah. And so we kind of really hit that. We try to very much not, especially there's a lot of pedantic film podcasts out there who they're not trying to make a good show. They're trying to show how much they know about film. And it's like, whoop de doo yeah. good for you guys. It just reminds me, and I don't know which newspaper it is or which magazine it has been, but I have heard growing throughout the years that there's some well-known higher end magazines and newspapers that intentionally write at a third grade reading level, mm -hmm. for example, or a fourth grade reading level, sure. rather than a university level to confuse people. They say they want to make sure everybody can understand and at least be on the same page for it. So that's really good stuff. So people are listening. Humans are listening. The yes and never say no is a cool takeaway. And don't be pedantic uh, and be like, well, actually, in trying to prove everybody, you've got a whole bunch more. Yeah, rules I, I decided put. to throw all of those, whatever one you feel like that sounds interesting. We don't have to go through all 10. Check your baggage. Does that mean that you don't bring like your sad day to the podcast or something like that? I think that's not our kind of show. You know what kind of show you're having. Our kind of show, I'm not going to talk about my dog got run over necessarily. If that happened, I probably just wouldn't podcast that night. But especially when, because we're pop culture reviewers, don't be like, well, you know what? I saw Wonder Woman with my ex and I really hated my ex. So now I hate Wonder Woman. It's like, that's not treating the piece on its own merit. Yeah, You're bringing this weird, nothing can exist in a vacuum, but as much as we can, we try to take each piece of art on its own rules. What bar is it trying to set? I got a question on that. Just be honest, even though I already did this and you can be, doesn't matter. 
I'm asking just, I'm genuinely curious on your perspective of this. And once upon a time, one of my employees passed away. She got a mudslide, like oh came and, and took her and her whole family out. And I did have an episode about that. Yeah. Another time, one of our clients. So we serve like 60 podcast hosts. We do all their editing and post-production and stuff. And one of them passed away. Yeah. And I did an episode. It was something like, regardless of who you are in business, if you're a podcaster, if you are whatever, let's take this time to remember that it could end tomorrow. And so here's some takeaways, like make sure you've done this, make sure you've done this and yeah. make sure you've done this third thing. Do you think, in your opinion, like the podcast on podcasting, do you think these are the wrong move to make about like bringing baggage? No, I think that's awesome. And it sounds like your show is a perfect format to do that because, because it's kind of a meta show, right? But so you're talking to the host and we could talk about like, let's dig into the SEO guys. Let's talk about what your favorite DAW is. But there's other aspects. And again, it's just trying to remember over and over again that everybody's a human. And what you're talking about is so human. We're going to lose people. And I think that's pretty important and makes total sense for your kind of show. I think it just, for whatever the creator is, know what your show is and if that makes sense or not. And I think for ours, and maybe I'm limiting what our show is, but I, it just would not jive with our show. I'm going to go to your rule number four now. This is actually where we're going to end. This is actually, actually, this is tell a complete story. And I don't know what that means or what the context sure. is. And it sounds like something that could be valuable to the listener. So would you share what it means to tell a complete story? I can try. And I'm sure some listeners like he definitely didn't do that throughout this. But all these are aspirational rules. So I'm not even talking about like the monomyth, the hero's journey. A, a story needs these 10 steps. It's You can whittle it down to its basic parts. A story is like a joke. It has a setup. It has the middle and it has the punchline. And the people who just ramble, like I love podcasting because it can be so many things, but the dangers are it can be so many things. And so somebody's like, Ooh, what did I want to talk about on today's episode? Well, you know, I was driving to Starbucks and I saw a dog and that dog was pretty cool. Like, where's this story going? This is not going anywhere. So what are you actually trying to tell somebody? And again, this is one I think just in real life, not just podcasting. And my eye starts to twitch anytime I talk to certain relatives of mine and they start telling me about their day because it's a ramble. It's not a story. And again, you have humans on the other end who are giving you the gift of their time and ear holes. Don't waste that time and ramble and say all this nonsense. Get to your point. And it can be if you're a good storyteller, if you've been on the moth, then you know how to do that and you know what details to add. But if you haven't, put a lot of thought into what you're going to say. I don't like scripted podcasts, not like fictional, but like when it's one person just reading or two people reading at each other, get that gets under my skin. So find that happy medium, put a lot of thought before you start recording into what you're going to say. So you're not doing this rambly, like a five-year-old trying to tell you a story or a joke is... If it's your five-year-old, it's adorable. If it's not your five-year-old, it's the most infuriating thing in the world to listen to. I totally understand. When it comes to just like the setup, what's a good setup? Like, do you say, for example, I listened to your podcast a few episodes. In the beginning, you say something as like, it's whoever's basically running the show on that episode mm -hmm. says something like, in this episode, you're going to learn, we're going to talk about, and then they list a few things and yeah. then they'll say, and much more, and then to kind of jump in to the actual episode. And what I like about that, and I think is a good takeaway for the listener, is that I always say, tell them what you're going to tell them, and then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Yes. And in this case, for your podcast, you hook us, you hook the listener with, why should I care? What matters? What am I going to learn? What am I going to hear? And so you get that curiosity started like an amush bush and um you say like a small morsel yeah. that kind of wets the appetite gets you ready and gets you excited about the episode and then you'll go through you'll do it you'll do it with a lot of humor and uh and then you you'll deliver on it and then at the end you kind of wrap it up and you, you you're like this is what we talked about mm -hmm. um and I, I love that going to just like a story setup like what needs to be involved i mean i know it needs to hook somebody but in your experience, is there like a formula that you could share with the listener on what is a good setup to a story? 
Yeah, I, uh, formula. That's such an interesting. I think through examples. So the the only way is so you don't want to give everything away in that setup, but you need it. Like you said, hook. You need to give them a little taste. So if I just was like, I was sleeping at my granddad's and it was this big mansion. This was like 15 years ago. And because he married the richer lady, this is a bad story. There's no setup. And you have no idea that I'm about to tell you that I woke up and there was a ghost in the room. But if I'm like, let me tell you about the time. I'm pretty sure I saw a ghost when I was 16. That's your hook. So okay. give them that nut to grab onto. And then you can start being like, it was a dark and stormy night kind of stuff. But I think grab them a little. And like in the business business world, they do it too much. And it's so dry, right? But I do think keeping that, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them is so important. In another life, Adam, I did stand-up comedy. And I try to do a joke about the guy who invented the tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them. And it was him doing a presentation about that, but it was just so repeated and just snake eating itself over. It never worked. I always thought it was very funny. It never worked on stage. (laughs) Good stuff. So if you're listening and you want to connect with Mike Ravino, just check out any links that are down in the show notes. Anything he wanted you to have for social media, for podcast episodes, for business websites, or anything like that is down in the show notes. So you could just scroll down, connect with him. And by the way, the next episode is a much shorter episode. It's just a solo with you and me, where I just pour into you, help you with the things that I know you're going through and know you're struggling with. To be able to overcome those, you could be a better podcaster and monetize I will see you on that episode. Thanks, Adam. If you're glad that you checked out the podcast today, if you got some value out of this episode, some actionable takeaways, I invite you to do one of three things. A, you could do a written review on Apple. Let us know what you think. Just an honest written review. B, you could share the podcast with a friend of yours who needs it. Or C, at the very least, implement what you've learned to take your business and your podcast to the next level. And I'll see you on the next episode.